Hey, happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me everyone tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. It is a time when we can relax and craft for about an hour and we work from a project on a project from, be from beginning to end. And I am continuing on my splendid sampler quilt from uh, uh, back in 2016 on Valentine's Day, we started we started this quilt. Uh, it has a hundred six inch blocks in there and I am finally to the point that we are stitching on that binding. So yesterday we started stitching the binding. We got to about, we got from from here, we did a corner. This is where I ran out of my blue, so we had to put some green binding and we got to here. So I'm hand stitching this on. We've machine stitched on one side and now I'm flipping it over the raw edge of the quilt and hand stitching it. Uh, and we'll do that today and tomorrow yet. And then the rest I'll just, I'll do while, while I watch the Royal Wedding or something on Saturday. So, all right guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get going on this tonight. Thanks for joining me. All right, here's the quilt, a whole mess of stuff. So when we're done here, I will also um, show you the full quilt. So this weekend, I'm hoping to finish it this weekend. I don't know. Never know what the weekend holds and, and all that, but um, we'll see. And uh, I do want to give it a little wash before, um, you know, just as a final, final thing to do, see if it fluffs up a little bit. Uh, the Royal Splending Binding, exactly. Um, but yeah, so we'll uh, we'll see what it looks like then. And then I'll be sure to lay it out on the ground so I can show you guys. All right, grabbing some floss, I think, or some thread. I'm getting a little less thread than we did last time. Oh, we we're going to try a knicker knot at the beginning, but I didn't look up how to do that again. I don't know. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Uh, but all right. Let's go where we left off here. I'm just gonna go in the back. Um, we could try, why don't we try the ladder stitch way of doing this? So um, we did like this little, oh, it's not a whip stitch. What is this called? Uh, this kind of stitch that we did last night. I, I don't quite remember. Um, but tonight we'll, we'll do the ladder stitch. So um, to do that, um, all right, so right now I'm in the the back of the quilt and I'm not in the binding So I'm gonna go directly across and Instead of coming out right away. We're gonna go a stitch length away, but we're gonna stay in the binding All right, and then I'm gonna pull that through Oop, Knocked over the thread all right, so we we're st we're stayed in the binding now, and now we're going to just cross over. So we're now we're in the the back of the quilt, and I'm gonna just stay in the back of the quilt for a stitch. See that? So I'm only in the back of the quilt, and I don't actually have to even tighten this yet because we can tighten it all at once. So I'm I'm just crossing over again to the binding. So binding and binding, coming out, then cross over, and then we're in the back in the back. And we're just going up and down. So um, this is actually the stitch that you do to um, close the hole, like when you're when you're making a stuffed animal and you're stuffing it, and to close the hole, it's this ladder stitch. So the nice thing about a ladder stitch is it can all be loose. See, all the stitches are are loose here, but if I just give it a pull, the whole thing tightens up all nice. So I can do a few stitches really without pulling my thread all the way. Um, so yeah, so I'll just do that. So I'm not even, I'm not even pulling my thread all the way through. I'm just going back to back, then binding to binding, back to back. I could do a bunch of stitches all at once and then pull through at the end. There, so see now I can just pull the thread. Ooh, except we're getting tangled. Oh, I was gonna get some wax for this today too. Man, didn't remember that either. So I don't, um, I did not learn to do a quilt this way. Um, I heard of people 
doing this ladder stitch way of doing it later. Um, I do like how fast it is, but for some reason I just feel, I don't know if this is true, but I feel like it's maybe not as secure as the, um, the like blind hem stitch or whatever that other stitch is. Uh, and the reason I think that is because I just feel like, you know, if someone, or if, if this accidentally gets, let's say it actually accidentally gets like cut right here, like we lose a stitch. I just kind of feel like the whole rest of it's gonna come apart with a ladder stitch. Whereas with this, um, this blind hemming stitch, I feel like if one got out, the others would kind of stay in place. I guess that it wouldn't really, because there's nothing really holding those there, but I think, I just feel like we'd have more of an opportunity to get at it faster, but I don't know. That might not be true at all. Ooh, wow, we got a lot of stuff here. I'm gonna trim all that off. Get all the straggles. But we'll, we'll do the ladder stitch for this first, um, first thread tonight. I'm hoping maybe we'll get another one in too. Cause I did a little, a little shorter thread than last time. So I'm, I'm just pulling it through gently um, every couple stitches just so it doesn't start to tangle with too many stitches. And then I can, I can still pull it tight later. That's the fun th thing about the, the ladder stitch. But yeah, it, it's, I'm guessing a ladder stitch cause it looks like a ladder. It just looks like all these little crossings, um, all these little vertical stitches. But it's fast, I mean, you know, it's something that, you know, your hands have to get used to the different position because um, now where the um, angle of the, of the needle is always pointing horizontal this way or parallel to, to the binding instead of like, you know, stitching upward and, you know, making all this motion. So, you know, maybe that's why I like the other way too. The other way just, I get them that relaxing feeling from that other style of stitching. I, I don't get it as much with, with this ladder stitch. I'm not getting the Zen as much. You, was, you were taught to, when hemming, do a double stitch every so often. Ah, oh, I like that, Noeline. I'm gonna do that. Cause that's, that's like my fear with, with this. So what Nolene's saying is every once in a while, just add a little extra stitch in there, a double stitch. Cause that's almost, it's almost like tying a little knot. It's just like an extra little security. So we'll, we'll do a double stitch here. So there, so now if, if the thing pops out here, it'll kind of stop at that double, double loop. And then, then we'll only have to repair that much instead of like the whole binding. I like it. Good suggestion. I I think that's a good uh, that's a good suggestion for this other way of hemming as well, um, or not hemming it. This other way of binding, um, just do a little double, double double every once in a while. I like it. Good plan. That makes me feel better about about this ladder stitch. Fuzzle. Yeah, like maybe just every time before I move down, just add another little extra, extra little tick in there. And that's good, I like it. And we can still do the ladder stitch, which is pretty fast, but we'll just be getting, getting those extra little knots in. Oh man, so we are listening to the radio all day today the um our local radio station here we have a great local radio um public radio station um it's it's split up into a bunch of radio stations so we have like the news um public radio npr or mpr minnesota public radio and then then we have um um the current which is like music but it's just like well curated it's not it's still public radio um, but anyway, they were having their pledge drive this week, <laughs> and they did this thing um, this week. It was uh, their their station is eighty nine point three The Current, so they had the uh, 
they did a the eighty or the the eight hundred ninety three. Um, oh, what was it? Essential was it essential? Essential songs list. So they had just people vote in for their favorite songs or what should be on the essential songs list. And then for a week, they were playing the 893 most essential songs. So uh, we uh, um, we started working, me and a couple friends, and we just we turned on the current and we're like, last this was last week when they started it. I think it was the first day, and they played like some uh, like. So now we're, we're in the 800s at this point, right? So they played some Bee Gees, and then they played, um, like, the Kermit the Frog Rainbow Connection, and we are like, what is going on on the current? And then we found out that it was the 893, <laughs> like, songs that people voted for. And we're like, okay, that makes sense. So it was just kind of fun trying to figure out... Um, what comes next and today was the last day so today when we were working um we were at like the top 60 and this evening this evening like everyone around the town was had to stay listening to the radio uh they had a good a good way of describing it um some of the people writing in like tweeting in about it they're like it's like we're listening to like a 40s radio program um like some orson wells program or something and we all have to find out what happens. So it was the top ten, top ten this evening, and uh, so we had a we had to all listen to what the top ten was, and you know we all guessed what the number one was going to be when we found out that this whole thing started. So we guessed that last week, um, number one was a uh, purple rain, which was expected because we are in Minnesota here. And if there was anything other than Purple Rain for the number one uh, most essential song um, that people just like random people vote on in Minnesota, it was going to be Purple Rain. <laughs> but almost all the top 10 were like 70s rock music, which was perfectly fine with me. It was good. But like all day to today, I'm like, oh my gosh, they have to play some Queen soon here. And uh, uh, Queen, they it was number eleven for um, Pressure, and then Bohemian Rhapsody was number two, which I was pretty proud of Minnesota for that. I, <laughs> I like I like my Queen. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it was just a, a goofy fun day because we were all just like. Had to listen to the radio. Had to listen to what was what was next. <laughs> Haven't done that in a while. Just just listening, listening to music all day long. <laughs> Ugh! It's also ant world here right now um we always get these little itty bitty sugar ants this time of year and uh we had to get the traps out yesterday we're we have like our little mini heat wave right now i think it was pretty mid to high ish i don't know high ish but pretty hefty 80s here today um, which is, you know, new news to us. Uh, so it's been steamy, and that's when the bugs come out. Ooh, but the lilacs are out, and the lilacs just smell perfect and are lovely. We have tons of lilacs outside uh, on our driveway. It's like a little median between our neighbors and, and our driveway. I cut some yesterday and brought some in, and now my whole whole place smells nice in here. But oh my god, we are getting to the point that we need to get the air conditioner in because ugh, we're kind of it's getting it's getting muggy and hot real quick here, and it makes it pretty difficult to sleep. We're sleeping in like a 
steam room. All right, we're almost done with this first, first bit of thread. Oop, got another knot here. Maybe we'll get to the corner tonight, but I, I kind of don't think we'll quite get to the corner on this. I'm going to do a little double-double again. I love that tip. Thanks, uh, Nolene. That was a great... That, like, that solved all the little question marks in my head. <laughs> Adding this little extra loop every once in a while to secure it a little bit more. I like it. But yeah, maybe we'll we'll switch back to the other way um, for the next piece of thread so you guys can see that again. But I don't know. This is growing on me a little bit. It is it is fast. This ladder stitch. So I just kind of do it loosely and give it a little pull every now and again. You saw a garden answer. Oh, and that's a lilac blooms. All summer called a oh, bloomering. Oh, fun. Oh, they just smell so good. And then, you know, we have tons of neighbors that have them too. And all the like um, cherry blossoms and apple blossoms and all those are, are out. So it just smells awesome around the neighborhood. And last year, um, I, I distinctly remember... We hardly had the lilacs at all because I kept thinking, oh man, I got to go grab some lilacs. They're almost, they're almost all the way in bloom and stuff. And I kept thinking, oh, I got to go grab, grab some. But, you know, the moment you have like a rainstorm with some wind, then, then they're all gone. All, every little, every little pretty flower, yummy smelling flower is gone. Um, so I'm, I'm happy I got to snag some for the house this year. And i got all the fresh cut lawns that smell good. It is a good time of year for the smellies, that's that's for sure. Although people are getting way allergy-ish too. I was kind of sneezing quite a bit today, but I don't know. We'll see. West Texas, your lilacs bloom in early March. Oh, and then again, early November. Oh my gosh, they bloom twice. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah, I guess early March and November, that's probably similar temperatures. Wow, that's neat. We only got the one time, and like I said, if it rains, then it's then it's gone. Oh, it's freezing there by you. No fun. Yeah, I'm glad we're glad we're over that at least. All right, we're almost done with this first uh, first thready. I'll get one more of those little double doubles in here. We'll do that. We'll do that right now. And then we'll just stitch to the end of this thread. And do or not. We're moving along here. This is definitely uh, if you are um, under the gun, like have to get a quilt done no matter what, in a short amount of time, I probably would not have chosen this hand binding because this is not fun when you're under pressure. It's only fun and relaxing when you can just chill and stitch and don't have to think about a deadline. <laughs> Lilacs. Ooh, yes, lilies of the valley. I love lilies of the valley. Ooh, mock orange. We don't, I don't know what that's like. Those are your favorite smells. Yes, I love lilies of the valley too. Oh, I wonder if ours are doing anything. We have a couple. We've had to move them around a little bit, but I don't know. I'll have to take a tour of the outside again this weekend or something. Or next time I next time I go outside for a walk, I'll walk around in the backyard too. But yes, Lilies of the Valley, love those. And they're just the cutest, too. They're just so sweet.
Everything's super green. There's no mosquitoes yet, although the ants are here. But we're taking care of those early. Ants are way better than mosquitoes everywhere. Used to go to Arizona to visit your parents in Sun City. The smell of the orange blossoms in the evening was amazing. Oh man, that's cool. We've been walking to get coffee in the afternoon, so getting a nice sunny walk in, although that makes me super tired for the rest of the day. It's like my body doesn't know what to do with all the sunshine and the heat and the moisture. It's like, what is all this? And then it shuts down and I have to take a nap. But it's awesome. So nice outside. It's my favorite time of year. I like this better than fall. A lot of people like, like autumn, but when everything starts to just get warmer and warmer and smells yummier and yummier and gets further and further away from freezing cold, uh, I like that. We'll go a little more here and tie our, our knot. Let's just, let's see if I can remember the knicker knot. So, all right, we'll go across on one here. All right, a knicker knot. So I think if I remember, we went in to the loop. How was it? Oh, I might not have enough thread for it. Let's see, one we went around this way. Oh man, I'm not gonna remember. I'm gonna have to look up the the knicker knot again. We'll just tie a little knot here and and uh, go back to the inside here, and we'll just do it how I, I did it last night. Just kind of find a place tucked on that will be underneath the uh, binding and tie a little knot there and and tuck it in. But yeah, I'll have to look up how to do the knicker knot. I know like the bottom goes up one way and then the top goes the other way. Oh, one of those things that is not ingrained into my muscle memory. Um, my left hand doesn't, doesn't really, I mean, yeah, you know what? It is a little cramped. I'm sure if I did this for the whole quilt, it would probably be really rough. It's actually worse for me, um, doing it that way where people, where other people have worked, um, this way and, and flipped it up and then stitch this way, that, this way I have to hold much tighter, I feel like. This way I'm just kind of gently resting my hand in place. So um, I'm not having a huge problem, but now that I, now that you mentioned it, I am, and I'm thinking about it directly, yeah, I mean, I think it probably would cramp up. So a, a good, a better solution would probably be maybe some Wonder Clips, but really you do still have to hold it, um, but maybe you don't have to grab as much, I don't know. Should take breaks and a stretch, I suppose. All right, well, we got um, our first little segment here done tonight. Uh, let's grab some more thread. Uh, we'll do another, another little bit here. This time I think I'll do that other, that little hemming or that blind hem sort of stitch. It's just more comfortable for me. It feels more, feels more, like I know what I'm, well, it just feels like my hands know what they're doing more with that and they like it. Yeah, a few Wonder Clips. Yeah, I think, I don't know, the one thing with Wonder Clips is I would think that your thread would get caught on it all the time, which would be super annoying. I would think. Okay. Ready to go here. Tomorrow I will get some wax out and see if that helps a little bit. I'm just gonna tuck into the edge here again. Come out the side of the binding. That should do the job. All right, so now for, for this blind hem. So I'm starting up in the binding and then I'm just going you know directly across. So now I'm in the in the underneath and I'm doing a stitch 
like a stitch length away, just kind of how we did the, the ladder stitch, but instead of coming like in the back of the quilt to the back still, I'm gonna go from the back and then catch, catch the binding again. So kind of, you know, like a mini diagonal. And now this you do have to pull all the way through because um, you have to tighten each stitch on their own. You're not gonna be able to stitch like a bunch of these and then pull and have them all tighten. They're kind of more locked as their individual things. And you know what, already I think maybe, <coughs> excuse me, already I think I maybe wanna go back to the ladder stitch because this is gonna take a little bit longer, but we'll see how it goes. Kind of like how it feels. But I was getting used to the ladder stitch just then and that was pretty fast. Oh, Linda, you've tried wonder clips for binding but think they get in the way. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm with it too. Ooh, sorry, my nails are kind of weird today. I, I just keep trying to put more nail polish over the top instead of having to start over and they're just getting getting goopy. Oh, thanks, Bonnie. Yeah, I think I'm getting a tish of the allergy stuff. Um, I've been sneezing a little bit today. But we're still trying to sleep with the windows open and I think, I think that might be the error. I think we're gonna have to finally put the air conditioning in and the sneezing will go away. I think I, oop, nope, didn't quite catch the front that time. I always like the front with just like a little itty bitty binding there. I think it's just sleek. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the same color binding as the the border and I don't always do that, but I think lately I've kind of been doing that. I think for the Charming Chevrons quilt, we're gonna do the same color binding as the, the um, you know, main background color as well. But I think for the for the Charming Chevron's quilt. We're gonna start that up again on Monday, the quilting of that. Um, but for that quilt, I think we're going to do, what is that, the self-contained binding, or, or what is that called, where um, we use the back fabric and flip it over to the front. Maybe we'll machine stitch it too. Get her done. Oh, your cottonwood trees. Oh, and it's snowing cotton. That's that's the big one. That's um, that's what my husband's allergic to, and and I think my dad and brother are. That's those cotton trees. Oh, that's true. That's true, Noeline. There's the quilt is so busy that you kind of don't want your eye to go to anywhere else. So that's, yeah, that's kind of why we've just kind of framed it. Uh, yeah, that's how I kind of like the border. The border kind of held all the crazy, um, all the crazy on the on the inside. So once I show you, I mean, this looks like crazy town. All these blocks just mashed together. But um, if you haven't seen my quilt from far away yet, because it's, it's been ages um, since I've gotten this out, it all kind of comes together at a far away glance because I did blend the colors. Like, you know, this blue is going into this blue and it's going into the bl this blue and then it gets, you know, lighter and lighter and, you know, redder over in this direction and green, you know. So when you look from far away, it's more of like masses of color. Moving around, it's less, you look less at all the individual, individual blocks. You don't really pay attention to that as much in your first initial act, um, reaction to it until you go up to it and, and look at each block. So um, it does look very busy, you know, from this view that we're looking at, but um, it does meld together a little bit from far away. And especially with, yeah, this, this just plain dark blue border, it just kind of holds, holds it all in. Um, so there was there was a method to the madness a little bit. <laughs> so instead of instead of dividing all of the little instead of putting like a border around every single block, that's kind of what I did instead. So this way all of the blocks um, will be like on top of the bed um, once we have this on our on our bed. Oh thanks guys. 
All right, I'm doing my little double double here again because I think that was a good idea for for this type of stitch too. I keep feeling like I'm going through the whole quilt, but we're good still. And then the back again, I did all of the um, you know the scraps from the front, so that's why we got like these little oops, you guys can't see little weird blocks, and you know that's why some other weird fabric came in here. Um, I'm just using using it all up. All the fabrics that I picked out for this, uh, I tried to use them, use them up on the back. And there's plenty of sp plenty of space. Oh, there's my mom. Um, yeah, the little purse. This is one of my favorites too. I do like these little balls on that. I had to look for a while for just the right uh, right little clasp, but it looks like one of those clasps, you know, where you have to where you overlap lap them, and that's how it locks. And I like the little gold um, or the. Oh, I think I ran out of I ran out of the silver color, but I have the silver little chain stitch to look like a look like a chain. Oh, I'm not. I think we drew that in. I don't think this was part of the design. This um this embroidery. I think we added this embroidery and and this um, for the opening. Forgot about that. All right, we are falling off the table a little bit here. I gotta get the bulk bulk up here again. Eh, we are not going to quite get over to the next corner yet um, today, but I think tomorrow, um, tomorrow we'll hit the next corner. Tomorrow it'll be like a lot like the first day. So um, two corners, two corners will be done by the end of day uh, or end of our time tomorrow. So that will be snazzy. Yeah, it's funny. The, this purse is kind of one of my favorites too. I I was really surprised working on it because I did not think I was going to like all the cutesy little patterns. I thought I was going to like the more graphic ones and, you know, like this one over here. I mean, I do really like that one, but I was thinking in my head like, ooh, I'm going to like all these, you know, traditional graphic blocks. But I think all of my favorites are the super cutesy ones, the ones that I thought for sure I would, they would just be like too saccharine or something, you know what I mean? But I like, I like all of those a lot. <laughs> so that was a surprise for me. I like cute stuff, but sometimes the super duper cute stuff, I'm just like, oh man, it's too much. But you know, this is super cute and I just love it. You love the bird? Oh, yeah, the bird. That is one of my favorites, too. That one was a surprise because I looked at that one and I thought, oh, this must be foundation paper piecing because it's so intricate. But it wasn't. It was all little pieces and we had to cut each piece exactly and, you know, sew tiny half square triangles together and, you know, then sew all the pieces in the end together. So that was kind of neat. A neat reminder that you can sew a bunch of intricate design stuff without, you know, a special trick like foundation paper piecing. Yeah, still surprised that there was no kitty block in um, all this, but we did have, um, like here, I can see some. Ooh, it's heavy. We do have some kitty fabric hiding in, in um, in this everywhere though. So at least we have some kitty fabric. So we'll stitch to the end of this thread. Got a little ways to go yet, and. Um, then that will be that for tonight. And then we'll work on this one more, um, we'll work on this one more day. And then, like I said, I'll just finish it up and show you guys it when I'm done. Cause I'd like to get started on the Charming Chevrons quilt again. I'm still having a little, you know, I wanna do that sketchbook cover book or sketchbook cover project. 
I'm still having a little trouble getting my hands on books, so I'm, that's kind of what the delay is, but I'll um, have more info, information on that soon too. So we're not going to just spend tons of time quilting the Charming Chevrons quilt. We're going to, we'll do that for a little while and then we'll switch to, you know, a little quick project and then we'll go back to it and we'll just kind of trade off some short and sweet projects with, with the quilting. Um, with the Charming Chevrons, first we have to do all that um, stitching in the ditch quilting of all the, all the little zigzags. Then after that, we'll do our free motion learning. <laughs> oh, you think in the book, the splendid sampler book, that bird is paper pieced. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. To be honest, I haven't paged through the book quite so much because, you know, we got all the, we got all the patterns kind of beforehand before the book came out and I haven't gone back to check out all the patterns in detail in the book. I don't even have this done yet. I got to get this done first before I can reminisce about it. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna add another little double stitch here. Feels like I haven't done that in a while. I like that idea though, still. I can see the corner approach in here, but we still got a ways away from it. I think if we get it, if we get to it tomorrow, we'll like just get there. But that also means by tomorrow we'll have one, oop, lost my needle. We'll have one whole side done. So that is nice. <laughs> Ugh, we don't have our garden planted yet either. That's got to happen soon, but we're still one of those bunnies um, figured out it can jump over our fence and get in. So now we have to raise our fence because that those rabbits will eat the entire garden in like an afternoon. <sighs> it's annoying. I'm seeing everyone making their pretty gardens online and they don't have any fences at all. And I'm like, oh my God, we almost need a dome for, for our garden. Because even if we keep the rabbits out, we still have the squirrels to deal with. And they're, they're eating all our, like our zucchinis and squash and all that. They'll, they'll eat that or they have. And tomatoes, they'll steal tomatoes. It's annoying. And those, I mean, we'd have to completely enclose the whole thing. Um, like we need a ceiling on it too, a roof for those um, squirrels. I'll scooch again. Your poodle Poppy is trying to distract you. She brings you leaves to get a treat. Oh, that's funny. It's a cute name. Oh man, I'm still feeling a tiny bit sneezy. Ah, a scarecrow. Oh, you know, the little scarecrow like a cat. So that's what we need. We need a little cat that lives in the garden. That would keep the squirrels away and the bunnies. Oh, you gave up your garden years ago. Oh, the deer ate almost, almost everything. Oh, that's a bummer. What they don't eat, something else does. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're getting close to that. Uh, the I quit stage, Linda, I think. Uh, we'll give it this year. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where we're at um, with whatever we do to the fence next, but it's going to be like human height soon. And, you know, that's not going to stop squirrels at all. They're just going to climb on over. But man, if we can just get this bunny. Um, ugh, we're going to need one of those ones that go all the way up with the metal on top and then you know, a real door frame in there. And I don't know, I don't know if we're that hardcore. But if we're not going to be that hardcore, that means we just have to be okay with like losing, losing a quarter of the crop every year and being annoyed at squirrels. But I suppose 
that's okay too. It is nice to have all that fresh zucchini and kale and tomatoes and everything. <laughs> We can't get all the zucchini, but most of it, I suppose that's okay still. But yeah, I suppose we gotta get that planted really soon here. Gotta go on the list, I suppose. The rabbit could be trapped and turned loose in a wooded area. Eh, I don't know if that works in town here. I'm not sure we're allowed to do that. And we'd have to trap like 50 rabbits. You hung tomato plants. Oh, up high on those upside down things. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, and the deer just stood on the, its back legs and ate them. Oh, man. That's a huge bummer. <laughs> Jerk butts. I just need one of those walls in the house that, that um, are made of food. Oh, cut an outline of an eagle and suspend it. Yeah. I'm thinking they would figure that out pretty quick. But yeah, we do have actual hawks and eagles that sometimes snag them, but there's just so many. I think they're kind of fearless. They're just everywhere. We're getting getting to the end here. I don't think I don't think there's a way to get rid of them. Um, so we're in the realm of barricading them out. <laughs> and uh, last year was great. Got that going. Oh, rubber snake. Just put snakes in. What we need is like a real cat. That would be nice, right? Real kitty cat. They say to plant marigolds. And glow basil to keep them out. Huh, that's interesting. I don't know, I still feel like this dude would just jump over the fence and be like, I'm over the fence again, ha ha. Oh, your brother put a bird feeder close to his window. Oh, and a large bear climbs up the tree and stretches his paw to grow. Oh my gosh. So that's one thing that I don't think we have to be too scared about in our little neighborhood here, um, having, having bears. Although there have been fox sightings and raccoons and, and deer. I haven't seen any deer in this neighborhood, but just slightly out of this neighborhood. But we've seen hawks carry away, uh, carry away baby bunnies before and We've seen bald, bald eagles in our area too. But all those birds could eat nonstop all summer and they would not catch all these rabbits. Oh, you have rubber snakes on the beam to keep the robins out. And an owl. Oh, to keep the barn soles away. Oh, man. Does it all work? I just think these guys are just going to be like, Psh, whatever, lady, and keep doing their thing. All right, we're almost done here. Oops, start doing the ladder stitch there. Special garden for the bunnies, just a garden that they can eat out of, huh. So there's only that one bunny. And last year we were able to have no bunnies in the garden at all when we put up the metal fence. We have like a knee height or maybe a little slightly less than knee height metal fence. And then the one rabbit discovered, oh, hey, I can jump over this. It is squirrels, which is, I mean, like, if we can just figure out how to get that one bunny out, then I think we'll be okay. So I think if we can just get a little more fencing and zip tie it to the old fencing, I think we might be good there. But really, if we want to do something about the squirrels, then, then we're, we're talking roof situation. Oh, the snakes worked for the robins. We just hung the owl today. Oh, to keep the swallows out. <laughs> uh, I don't mind the robins around here. What are the robins, like how are the robins a nuisance? Do they eat, eat certain things from the garden? 
All right, I think this is gonna be my last stitch here. I'm, I'm gonna run out of thread here real quick. So I'm gonna just do the double loop here. We'll do a little knot. Man, I'm trying to remember the knicker knot. Over this one, I don't remember. I'm gonna have to look it up. All right, and I'm gonna just tuck this in and we'll tie our extra little knot. Oh, they build nests. Oh, under the patio. Oh, and the dogs get them. Oh, that makes sense. Robins eat pea seeds out of the ground. Oh, well, boo. That's a good reason <laughs> to shoo those uh, robins away. So that happened to your peas? Because that'd be sad. Fresh peas are so good. Oh, you don't have squirrels by you. Well, you're lucky. They're little monsters. Cute little monsters, but still. All right, um, so I think that's all we're gonna do tonight. So we did do quite a bit. So um, we're, we ended here and the next corner is right here. So we got about eh, a little over two feet to the next corner, but we did from here, you know, there's a foot, you know, two feet, three feet. Yeah, we did about four feet's worth, and then here's this green, that's kind of where we ended. Um, about four feet worth of binding today. So by tomorrow, I think we'll have the whole, um, this is the bottom of the quilt, so we'll have the whole bottom done. Here's, um, Here's just the binding from the top, just a little, little cute little sliver of binding. I think it's just so sweet. Um, just blue going off into nothing. And uh, yeah, so we'll do this one more night. We'll, uh, again, I think we'll round this corner. And um, that'll be that. We'll get back to the, the Charming Chevrons quilt after that. But here, let me, now that this is kind of lying flat, I can show you a little bit. So... Ooh, I don't know if I can get high enough. Let me see. There, you can kind of tell a little bit. See how it's kind of darker blue down here, and then it starts blending into like lighter colors up there. Um, then it falls off the table there, but that's kind of how this quilt works. So all the background colors kind of meld together, and I think it gets like red and green up this way. Um, so, oh here, maybe I'll just, I'll hold it here and I'll, I'll zoom it zoom it along so you can see a little bit more of it maybe. But yeah, so then it, it starts getting into like reds up in there and the little yellows, yellows that way. So it does kind of, um, when you look at it from afar, it does kind of meld together a little bit. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you guys around. Oh, thank you, Nolene. That's sweet. Yeah, so I'm I'm excited to have this done, and yeah, and, and I'll do a little um, I'll wash it up and snip all the little ends everywhere. Do a little last minute inspection uh, once I'm done with the binding. And yeah, um, I I hope we I hope I can get the binding done this weekend. But again, I don't know. Sometimes things pop up in the weekend, and and um, I can't work on on stuff, but. We'll see. I still think it'd be fun to get up on Saturday <laughs> at 6.30 or whatever, whenever the wedding stuff starts. And that'd be just a silly excuse to sit and sit and do some handiwork. <laughs> so, all right, guys, I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. And it will stay here on Facebook as well. And I will be here again on uh, Friday, tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. I think it's going to be super warm in 80s tomorrow, too. I'm going to have to wear shorts tomorrow, though. I'm, like, totally... Oh, yes, I need a little fascinator. Let's see. I wonder if I have something over here that can act as a fascinator. I don't know. I'll have to find something. Find something for my fascinator and some tea and biscuits in the morning. <laughs> so, all right. Have a great evening, guys. Good night.